be showing up to see what we've been up to with uh, Minecraft and OpenShift and children. <laughs> yeah. what, what got you started, Eric, when you were... So when I, when I was young, about 12, um, a friend of mine bought a computer, an MSX computer, like this one. Okay. And uh, my first, so the, it booted up and it was basically a basic environment, so you, you could type your own program in there. And the first program I did was just um, a little print my name. <laughs> right. And right away I was I was really caught by this. I got a book in the in the library and started programming. I got hooked. That that sounds very familiar. That sounds very familiar. I had an almost identical experience on this environment here that some of you might remember. <laughs> Like, what know, you're doing yeah. <laughs> in this environment here for those of you who remember very very similar right um, and those days um, it was different there was no um, there's no icon here to double click on to get onto YouTube exactly no apps to tap it was really simple <laughs> and uh, that's a bit of a problem right now with kids. If you want to learn how uh, learn them to program, and you say, "Okay, this little program can print your name on the screen," they're not really caught by that anymore. That, that's a little boring, right? Yeah. Print, print hello world is not getting them anymore. Right. 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 I, I wonder if you have any idea what we could do about that. Well, I, w I, I my son went to this DevOx for Kids once. Okay. And uh, they had Minecraft there. Oh, that's a cool game. Because, I love playing that as well. Yeah, because th that really gets th gets them because they they know this game and they played with it and and in uh, DevOx for Kids they show them how to extend this game. So okay. what he could do is build a little plugin that could he could change arrows into cats. Oh right, to throw cats through the air. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cool. That's, that's really cool. cool. Right. But then we came back and I said, okay, let's do this more because it was really cool. I thought, hey, that, that's cool. I would like to see how, that, how, it's, how it's done. And then he said, yeah, I don't know how to because you have to install all these things. I had this um, uh, Eclipse workspace and all that stuff. Right, because Minecraft know. has a Java API. And right. So you have to yeah. set up everything. You, you have, have to set up Java. You have to set up an editor. The server. The server, the plugin, the workspace. And then you need to compile these things and copy these jar files. And that's all a bit much, I guess. That's a little bit much for kids. Right. Compared so to our print. <laughs> to our, uh, our, our super environment here. Yeah, okay, it yeah. was just turn it on and go. I, I wonder if we could somehow get back to have an experience like that. Yeah. What, what would we need for that, do you think? We need something like a server running somewhere. Yeah, that would an be an easy way to set it up. That would be an, uh, one of the elements, right? Some yeah. way to run um, this, this, in this case, the game server. Right. To just sort of fire it up and get on it. And Luckily, <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> I've been working on a, a developer, a de developer experience, and we have this project called uh, Launch. Okay. And uh, it's basically, yeah, show the website. It's basically. Um, uh, a website where you can get going on uh, OpenShift, real simple right. and easy. Right. I like I like where this is going. OpenShift, like this um, runtime environment where you can get free accounts to all your applications and run them on. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps we could just run our server there. Right. And let our kids connect to that. The way we made it is that we have like uh, supported runtimes here, like Swarm, Vertex, and uh, uh, Node, and uh, Spring Boot. This all looks very serious. This is for work. This is for work. But right. it's made in a way that you can also extend it and add your own add your own examples to it. Ooh. Right. So, so while, while Monday to Friday at work, we can create new projects with Wildfly and Vertex and, and Spring and Boot. And in the weekend, we can make Minecraft servers for our kids. <laughs> that sounds cool. Can you show yeah, us? Show us. So we have this server set up on. Uh, our local OpenShift. So we have a local a local OpenShift running on this uh, on this laptop. That's just because we didn't trust the Wi-Fi here. Right. Right. So we actually have an OpenShift running locally. <laughs> yeah. So it's we this could... thing called MiniShift that you can use for that. Right. So here we can <coughs> say, I uh, just want to build and deploy and run on a, on a, on this local machine. Right. Local OpenShift cluster. And then you can say, you can choose oh, what you want. Oh, check this out. No JBoss, no Vertex, but Minecraft. Sponge. Sponge, yeah. Sponge. There's like a different kind of APIs uh, yeah. where you can build stuff on the... Uh, 
uh, Minecraft servers, and okay. Sponge is one of them, and uh -huh. that's the, the best one. Okay, of that's, course, we that's, the best one. <laughs> that's why we have it here. <laughs> and uh, you can choose here a uh, simple plugin example okay. uh, that will show you how to do how to do uh, how to do some extend Minecraft. Yeah, extend okay. Minecraft and then do some basic things. Okay. And then you you uh, choose your red, uh, GitHub account, so it will create a GitHub repo for you with this example code. Okay. Right. And that sounds really handy to get started. This right, and then when you press here, uh, set up application, it will create a GitHub account, add some web hooks, okay. so that when your code changes, the server gets restarted and, 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 with, and loaded with your new changes, right. and it will um, set this all up in OpenShift. Wow, so you can sort of with one click set up application, you can get started with an example, have it running in the cloud, let your friends connect to it. Yeah. Um, and this is pretty fast, or? Yeah, so uh, we could, it's just a couple of minutes, but couple we are, of minutes? but like a good chef, we, here's one I prepared earlier. Right, <laughs> right, 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 yeah. We're gonna save three minutes here of our 30 that we have with you. Yeah, so uh, let's show us, uh, this is the, this is the, the the GitHub repo that it created. Okay. And um, it has webhooks. So if I would go here. Yeah, wait, hang on, hang on. I, I lost, you lost me here. So what are we looking at here? This is. This is the demo plugin setup. Okay. So here is an example of a. Of a Example code. Minecraft extension. So this yeah. is what a, a kid would um, could be shown how to extend yeah. Minecraft. This yeah. So and you could you could you, you could go and play now. This. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love yeah, to. Go it's, and it's, play time, in this. it's time for some fun. It's time for some. Fun. All right. All right. Let's try this. Let's try this. So. Okay. This is the server that is also booted up and run set up for you. So this runs on this laptop inside our OpenShift. Is already local, ready. Local single node cluster yep. that we have here in a, in a container. And um, those of you who know Minecraft, it's the standard Minecraft world. Walk around here. And look at that. Well, what's happening here? That's the extension. That's really? the plugin. So, so the that changed the, the change the behavior of Minecraft, and whenever you collide, so every, whenever you jump, it will print this boing in this the boing in the chat. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, and that's you're saying this is coming from here. This is coming from here. Look at this. It's a, an event listener, and it has a collide event handler, and then uh, it when it finds the player and says boing. Okay. So walk me through this again. So we have on GitHub an example project how to extend Minecraft. Right. Which the OpenShift launcher created for us. Right. And this is running because how did this actually get so, sort of? So the, 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 hmm. there's an S2I, the source to image kind of a thing. All oh, right. Source the, to image is this this thing they have on OpenShift to right. go from source to containers. Right. Yeah. So it builds your it builds this code and right. then boots up a server running this running this plugin, adding this plugin. So okay. all I have to do is change this. So if I'm uh, uh, wanted to change this, I could just go here, go to edit and change Boeing into something else. Oh, like right on GitHub. Right on GitHub, check it in, and it will fire the web, web hook and reboot my server with build the plugin and so start it up again. It'll do the Java compilation to build the plugin. Yep. It will create a new container image with right. this S2I stuff. Right. It will stop the previous container, yeah. do a, a deployment that replaces the previous server mm -hmm. and gets the new one up. Right. So can I just keep playing or how that uh, works? You will be disconnected because the server restarts. All oh, right, the entire process is wiped, yeah. killed. Um, I mean, this is interesting, and, and sort of um, to learn about OpenShift, it's it's okay. But I have a ten-year-old daughter, and she's like way gone back to YouTube. Meanwhile, <laughs> so container yeah, I'm afraid, I'm afraid that's you're right. So not gonna. Yeah, it's not gonna fly. No, yeah. no. If only we had some way to hot reload code. That would be nice, so that we could actually change it live or something. Yeah, that we could change it and then build something and then hot replace it. So there's a couple of things, at least two um, sides to this, right? We would need a way to change the code somewhere more direct, because this whole GitHub committing it, right. rebuilding. So one to address that, we could we could we have something like Eclipse J, okay. which, is a, which is a which is an IDE that runs in your browser. Okay. So instead of installing Eclipse on your local machine we could run this also on our on our OpenShift instance and now 
instead of having just a little bit of a fancy text editor, here I have now the same project, see, the same project, the same code. Oh yeah, this here, is the same thing that was just up on GitHub. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so instead of, and instead of in, in GitHub, it's just in text editor. It's but just here, text area. Yeah, it, with some syntax highlighting. Okay. But here I have like code completion. Oh, this is a real editor. Real so, code editor. so that will help kids to find the right API to call and the right things to do. Hey, this Eclipse J thing is pretty cool. And yeah. this runs on OpenShift. And this runs on the same instance, on our same... Uh, Locally, we were able to set this up. Instance. That's yeah, pretty That's handy. pretty cool. So that okay. will solve one of those problems. And the other problem we have to solve is half replacing this code. Right. If only someone built something on top of OSGI. <laughs> right, right, right. Because Minecraft being Java-based, and so if you want to hot code replace um, things in Java, there's a couple of options there. There are these Java uh, JVM agents that you can use to replace code. Yeah, the, 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 the Java debugger can do this. Yeah, that was the kind of thing. But it has limitations. There's limitations, yeah. This OSGI thing isn't used that much in the industry for, for sort of production business applications, because you might not want to replace your running code <laughs> in production. You don't? So, so code in the project, <laughs> some code or something, that might not but be. But in this case, we totally want to do that. In this case, this would be quite handy, yeah. 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 So, so let's check. So Minecraft. OSGI. Oh, you, look. You did that. I actually did that last year. Yeah, right, right, right. I got this. <laughs> right. What a coincidence. So you're saying, hang on. So you're saying that from J in here, you could make a change. If you could so find a change. If I can find it again. Yeah, sorry. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, here. I could make a change. So let, let's do that. Let's say, let's, say hey, uh, hello, uh, DevConf. That would be some. That would be really cool. Let's do that. <laughs> Nobody does that. Right, right, right. <laughs> Oh. Devcom. If I could type. Devcom. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then save it. Save that. Okay. So now we've changed the source code inside the CHA container in the development right. side. And we need so, to sort of get it. So somehow we have to get it there. Mm -hmm. So there's a little Maven plugin mm -hmm. in this project already installed mm -hmm. that will make a diff of your code. Okay. Send that over over a WebSocket to the, the the running Minecraft server. Right. Wow. Got it. Wow. Okay. It will apply the diff. No. Yeah. Then it will compile the code into an OSGI bundle and hot replace this code. You don't say. This actually works. This will work. But right. I'll, I'll show you. Right. That's so right. That's right. <laughs> if, if the demo gods allow it. Right. So I just run this Maven. So this is a Maven build. Maven build. Yeah. Inside OpenShift on our development container. Inside a, a separate container. Right. So we can just get our kids to uh, extend and add some things in here. Just by going on this website. Yes. There's nothing needs to be installed locally. Right. So here, here's the plugin in running now. Okay. And it will send the, 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 the diff, so the, the things are changed. Okay. Right? And then it will fire off a build and uh, do OSGI magic okay, so to this get this code running. So right now, right now it takes, takes a... No, right now it's still boing. 10, 10, 20 seconds or so. And so without restarting of the Minecraft server. Because we can keep playing here. We can sort can of be in the world live. Yeah. And they walk around. Keep on, keep on jumping. And you think this message will change? It will. Huh. <laughs> if, <laughs> if not, <laughs> if not, <laughs> you can. <laughs> yeah, no. Let's see. Boing, boing, boing. Mm. Boing, boing, boing. I mean, this is. Oh, oh! check it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So now we have the Node Node.js experience right. in Java. Right, right, right. Without all of this overweight restarting process. Yeah, we just reload. This is handy. This is handy. We this is this gets kids going, right? Right, 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 right. So I think this works really well if we go back over here. This works really well if this makes some sense to you or you can sit together with your, um, what would you say? I would say like, you have to be like 12. 12, or, 13, or, 14. Yeah, maybe even a little bit older. Depending yeah. on what they've done before. Yeah. <laughs> right, because. <coughs> you have to know the APIs, you have to know all these Java constructs. There's a little bit of still. Right, all of these different APIs, these classes here. And then yeah, you have to know how that put works. Put the semicolon and braces and whatnot in the right places and all of the. Yeah. All the syntax stuff, otherwise it becomes red like this. And yeah. That's, I mean, it's cool, right? It's, it's cool. Pretty, pretty, it's pretty cool. cool. Pretty it's cool. cool. It's but cool. I'm just wondering if we could do better for the batch before. Yeah. Sort of eight, nine, ten, twelve year olds. Maybe we could do better. You this think? is the home of MIT. You're right, we're in Boston. <laughs> right. So they have this Scratch developed here. Anybody here does not know Scratch? 
Raise your hand if you don't know Scratch. Everybody knows Scratch. Right, everybody knows Scratch. Okay, okay. Scratch, Scratch is a visual development environment for children. Up on Scratch at MIT.edu. Very well known. It's been around for 12, 13, something like this years. Oh, right, yeah, it's available on the Raspberry Pi. It's very widely, very widely used. Um, and the cool thing with this is it's visual development. So instead of writing this code that we had over here, um, and the point here isn't really that it's Java code. I mean, if this was Python code, it would be the same thing. Um, the point is that for younger children, to just be able to assemble blocks is a really much easier experience. They can do that at, at, at the age of two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah Doing something with blocks. But here, yeah, if with eight, they could, they could get I, this. I think a minimum maybe reading, recognizing the blocks, and you can get them started. Yeah. Right. So, hang on. What we're saying here is that it would be interesting to be able to mod Minecraft with Scratch. With Scratch. Instead of Java. Mm. So how would that work? Because we are in a we're in a container over here in OpenShift. Uh, okay, we have this OSGI stuff. Yeah. But we would we would that? we would have to have some sort of uh, so we can extend it with JavaScript. So the, the oh scratch, scratch can be extended with JavaScript. Yeah, scratch can be extended with JavaScript. It's it's built in Flash, okay. but you can extend it with JavaScript. So that's we, the current version that's built in Flash. Right. There's a new version coming up, Scratch Free, which is completely written in JavaScript. Pure JavaScript. Yeah, because okay. then then you can also do it on your iPad or on your mobile. Okay. And and uh, Flash is so that would let us get some additional blocks in here. Right. So that will get some additional blocks. So if we would have something that would be JavaScript and Java, mm -hmm. that would be really cool. So yeah, because the problem we still have is that we're running, even if we had custom blocks, like if you had a custom block to maybe, I don't know, show something in here or something like that, yeah. we still need to bridge from what we're running in the browser to back in the back end where the Minecraft server is running. Right. So something that allows us maybe a sort of a distributed message bus or something, go from the browser back into the... Something reactive, something like Vertex. Vertex, right, I've heard about that. <laughs> yeah. Vertex is this um, other Red Hat thing. We're just talking about lots of these Red Hat things here. Yeah, we, we, get, <laughs> we eat our own dark food. Yeah, we do, we do, we do. <laughs> So that's a reactive um, Java framework that has um, an event bus that you can also use from JavaScript. Right, because it's... Uh, yeah, so they distributed. So um, let's see. We could actually, we actually have something that is running, right? Right. right. Let's, let's, right. let's show let's, this. Let's stuff. go there. So um, this is on another server. So I just need to quickly go out here. It's also running locally on our op own OpenShift instance. Actually, should we? We have the time maybe to jump into OpenShift. Yeah, let's just show. We have a show, few minutes, right? Show well, how how we set that up. We're good on time. Yeah. Yeah. So what we could maybe just show here is how on this uh, local OpenShift instance here, which just timed me out. <laughs> <laughs> really secure setup, right. developer developer. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, have here like we have the the, the, the launcher as I showed earlier in a separate project. Okay, so this is the container that runs this thing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Then mini J is the J instance we have shown. That's, that's a container, actually several containers that runs this online yeah, development environment. Because every every like build you do here is in a separate container. Okay. Yeah. And then we've got um, test 38, which is our Minecraft server. Right. That's the launcher created this project and set it up to do uh, the OSGI stuff. So let, let's have a look into this one, just sort of drill in here a little bit. Yeah. So what it's showing us here is that we have an application Minecraft server. Right. Um, and that application is running, if we click on this, has a deployment. It's the first deployment because we just set it up. Mm -hmm. And we can check out the logs here. Right. OK. This the logs of the running, uh, the running Minecraft server, right. if they come up. <clears throat> demo. Where are your logs? Yeah. <laughs> It's loading. loading logs. So this is the yeah, there we logs. Are. Oh, here we go. So this is actually the the logs of the Minecraft server inside the container that we can yeah, consult from the from the OpenShift console. Here you see the the the. <laughs> The Maven oh, this build. is when we made the change from Boing Boing. This is the Maven build. Right, right, right. When the Hello, the Boing Boing became the Hello uh, DevConf. Yeah. Right. And um, what's over here? What does this do? So here it builds, and they they create they create the the image that runs. Okay. So the point of going from here initially. Yeah. Going from our um, our source code here initially to a container. It's done by the build. That happens. Build that happened job. here. Yeah. Over here, we had like yeah. a build. Let's yeah. There's also you can show maybe also there's an image log. Yeah. No, oh, this is gone. Yeah. yeah this can, is gone. We can show the images. The images. There's an image here that two actually. Is this like um, Docker Hub? 
It's like Docker. Okay. Kind of basically the same it's thing. It's a registry. Yeah. A registry. An image, yeah. a container image registry that's built into Shift. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. Well, with that, we could um, look at our other project. The stories one here, very similar, very similar project. I'm going to use this opportunity as a plug to show <laughs> where we actually have this running, in case anybody wants to continue checking this out at home. We actually have what we're showing you here um, running on a public server, on a public OpenShift instance. So if you want to go to www.learn.study, you can actually see what we're about to show now, the Scratch integration. Um, and if you want to uh, run it at home, or God forbid, help us make it better, you can go check out the sources here, where everything we've done is, is linked. Um, yeah, you could uh, make it better, or uh, add some YouTube videos. Yeah. Every, every contribution is welcome. And there are different ways to contribute to open source, right? right. It's not just code. No, you don't have to code. Maybe yeah. uh, improve the documentation, or... Make the site better, Get make a video that shows what you've done with this. Yeah. Or get your children to do it. Or get some issues, like, <laughs> what else do you want? Right, right, what we maybe forgot, or... Yeah, something. or what doesn't work. Let's jump into this. So how does this work? I have to um, connect to oasis.learn.study. Yeah, that's the public one, but we also have it running locally. We're running well. locally as well? Yeah. We don't want to trust the conference yeah, <laughs> Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi. So we're going to use <laughs> this instance here, the mini shift one. Yeah. But you get the same thing when you connect to the public one here. Right. Um, ah, it became dark while we were talking here. Dark too long. Yeah. So these Minecraft worlds have a, a weather cycle and a daytime cycle. Hey, who is this? That's uh, Benny. Oh, right. <laughs> Benny, our favorite... Favorite donkey. Our favorite donkey. <laughs> okay, okay, so this is a standard Minecraft server. Where's the boing boing? It's, got, it's not on this one. Right. This, this one is a different one. This is the one where we have the scratch integration. Right. Okay, so um, let's go back to this uh, www.learn.study. What are we saying here? Yes, it's start by typing slash make. Type slash make in the Minecraft chat, and you get a link to the scratch. Oh, check this out. So we can do it slash make. Right. Then you get a link. Click here to open Scratch and make actions. Ooh, okay. Do this, do this. And do you think we can go in here? So basically, we're doing the same thing like what, like what we did before. Okay. Here we're, we're creating a plugin, or we're extending Minecraft, but not by code, but by uh, by adding scratch blocks using this vertex event bus right. from client to, to server. So we, here we have like a normal uh, uh, scratch GUI. It can do stuff like uh, have events and have uh, control blocks. So everything other than the more blocks is the standard scratch environment right. that some children are already familiar with. Right, and we have the Minecraft blocks, extra Minecraft blocks on the more blocks. So what, what do we have here? Maybe we can make this a little bigger. I don't know if there's any way to... Uh, control plus. Want to blow this up a little bit like yeah. this? Yeah. So the blocks that we have here, there's one that says uh, title. How does that work? So if we get this one here, put it in here, and uh, let's use a scratch uh, launch block, thing. Yeah, block scratch block. So yeah. when space key is pressed, so this is the space key in Scratch, not in Minecraft. Yeah. Just standard Scratch. So if I press space here, it's be fast. I get a welcome over there. You get my, basically, you get my first. <laughs> right, we're back to 20 years ago. <laughs> 20 years ago. <laughs> right. Because this is something that kids can get excited about. Right, right. And this is really easy. You don't need to set up servers and right. what. You just connect to this Minecraft server, type slash make, and then use these blocks. Right. Hey, right, this and is And then nice. you're extending Minecraft. And you're extending Minecraft. Do, do you think we can do more here? Yeah, sure. Yeah? Go, go ahead. What, what, what do we. I think you should do something with our favorite donkey here. I, I think that's a good idea. Let's. <laughs> Let's um, try to do something creative, more like storytelling, mm -hmm. not like slaying zombies and counting points. That's stupid, right? Yeah, that's let's, stupid. Let's do something a bit nice with, um, for example, we have a, what am I holding here? You're holding a carrot. Carrot. Tell you what, we'll make a custom command. Instead of pressing space and scratch, we'll build a custom command, slash demo, um, and we have this entity speak block here. Mm -hmm. Why don't I try to make Benny? Say something. Yeah. Hello, Defcom. See, it's a free over here. Oh, we can't do that demo. Let's do demo two. So, if we look at Benny and we do slash demo two. Hello, Defcom. Whoa. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
And because we have um, all of Scratch available here. We could do more. We could go crazy. We could right? do a, we add some logic to this. Okay. Let's do some if else. What do we have in here? If or maybe do it even better. Do if else. If then or if if then else? If then else. Let's go crazy. If yeah. then else. Okay. Let's go, <laughs> go crazy. <laughs> this is a huge logic. Right. <laughs> so, um, so we could make a story that would be like a fun story with the carrot and uh, feed me feed feed the donkey kind of thing that'd be fun that'd be fun so why don't we say if the item that's held yeah is equal to so visual like this item that's held, held is equal to equal to an apple. No, do a carrot. Donkeys love carrots. Donkeys eat carrots. Okay, so we'll do carrot. And let's change the hell def conf to say, is it is the donkey polite? Don uh, donkeys are also donkeys polite. Are very polite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please yeah. feed me a carrot. No, this, right. is, this is when you have a carrot. Oh, you're right. <laughs> I'm sure kids would have gotten this right, but I'm totally confused. <laughs> if it's a carrot, if then else we say, please feed me a carrot. If we yeah, are holding a carrot, carrot, you say, yeah, thanks for that. Thanks for the carrot, yeah. <laughs> like, yum, yummy. So Benny will say, we can have different characters also. So we can have a dialogue here. Like we could have Benny and his friend and they could exchange comments or something like this. Yeah. We could hear, thanks, yummy. Thanks for the carrot. Thanks for the carrot, yeah, yeah, because carrot. He's, he's polite like that. Right. So with this, if we're in here, and we say slash demo2, please, please feed, feed me, me a, a carrot. carrot. So that's because we're not holding the carrot. And if we use this Minecraft thing here to take the carrot into our hand, yeah. and if we do demo2 now, You'll say, yummy. Yeah, yummy. Thanks for the carrot. Thanks for the carrot. Nice. <laughs> cool. All right. So now we could build. Now kids could build a whole adventure, in, adventure in, inside Minecraft right, like, this uh, is with, uh, with a goal in the end. And, this is just and, the beginning. It could be some, some puzzles to solve. Puzzles, riddles, real stories or something. Yeah. You have to like find something. If you hold that, you can use the variables in, in Scratch. Scratch is this data blocks. This is basically variables where you could say, if you've done this before, you can set something to true. Yeah. And after yeah. do that. And First, complete the quest. Complete the quest or something, right. So the but sky's the limit. Yeah. Yeah, we, we probably can't figure all the things that no, we're kids too old. can. Yeah, we're too old. Kids, <laughs> kids, kids, kids can think of. Right, yeah. right. Right, so um, with that, we're sort of almost up on time um, and have basically covered what we wanted to show you guys. Um, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. Um, and most importantly, try this out. Uh, you can join our server here, www.learn.study. And you wanted to show the, the other. And we have some more links. We even have this chat server here. Our kids told us that yeah. the gamers are all on Discord. We didn't know much about it, but your, your son <laughs> yeah, My son says, hey, Dad, if you want to be cool, you have to be on Discord. Discord. So we have this <laughs> Discord channel server here that you can like join us and say hi. Yeah. Um, and all, again, the sources are linked down here. Um, we also have got a link down here for uh, more cool sites. This has nothing much to do with Minecraft, but we're just using the opportunity of having you all here to showing you that the last link on www.learn.study um, is a link to uh, this little site for educational YouTube channels and uh, hardware things for robots and micro bits and all of these things that some of you, I'm, I'm guessing, are familiar with. Um, and we have, over, over the last two years or so, I think, we've collected some recommended links here that are um, great for children. Yeah, and if you can think of think of some things that we forgot about on this page, then you can make a cool pull request for this one as well. Because of course this page is just a, a, a readme on a markdown on GitHub. Right. Um, this link down here. So you can just click here and, and edit it. Send this pull request for how you other things that you might be aware of that are very useful. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Are there any questions? Thanks for your interest. Yep. Just, just speak loud and we'll repeat it. We'll repeat it. Um, so I did this on the, the Scratch page we had the other day. Say the actual thing that I was doing.
you know, go to the state. Like, so two questions. Um, I guess number one, clearly you say that they come back to it later, but is this, is, are these actions active to every user on the server at the same time? That's right. a great question. <laughs> That's a great question. question. Yeah. That's a great question. So yeah, the question is, uh, are these commands for everybody on the server? Yeah. Right. And that's actually very much what we were working on like half an hour ago before the presentation we were looking at this. So <laughs> currently, um, this project is in the browser, and you can save it locally. So this save basically opens a, a file chooser and puts a zip file on your local thing. And we've just started chatting together how we're actually going to save the project that you have here, which is a JSON file in, in Scratch, and we're going to push it to the server. So save the scripts together with the worlds, because that's where they belong. This goes very much together with what you've created in Minecraft. Right, you have a donkey and you have a, your so adventure set up. So. This, this links technically things that are in the world. So right. we're going to save these projects on the server. Um, we're not quite there having finished that yet, but we're pretty much going to have it to do it. So Sorry. help us if you like. Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, once you do it, is it active for every user? So right now, it's for every user. As long as you have this open. So if you were to join the server right now, this would work for you. Yep. Um, but it's running in the browser. So if we close this tab, it won't be active for you anymore. Yeah. 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 And so something we wanted to do as a follow-up to when we have this push to the server, when we have this uh, saved in um, on the server, basically, in the directory, yeah. you, you can speak about this. Yeah, yeah. so in Scratch 3, the, the, the whole logic has kind of changed, and, in, and then and this is like a separate thing where you can parse the, the Scratch uh, file and, and save it also as a JSON file. So it, when, when we can run it on the server, so this whole parsing and, uh, and log logic on the server, and then we can save it easily. So the, the cunning plan is to move this to Scratch 3, yeah. which has the JavaScript-based, um, very modular architecture where they have a, what do they call it? The Scratch? It's based on Blocky. It's Bl from Blockly is for the front Blockly, end. Blockly, Blockly, Blockly yeah, from, from yeah. Google. Right. That's uh, for, for how it, look, what that, it looks like. That will replace this part here? Yeah, that will replace this part, and that's how it looks like. Then you have Scratch VM, that's basically the whole parsing running the, the running the scripts. The Scratch VM is the non-GUI. The non-GUI part okay. that we will then also run in Node on the server. Right. And then uh, there's a GUI, a separate GUI part that will do this, and we'll change it a bit, because here is, there's this preview window, or there, there's this preview window there. That doesn't that make that we much don't, sense. We yeah, don't exactly. need that, so we could change that, 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 that goes, and we have more space to So really the idea would be stuff. to push the project to the server, and then in Scratch 3, use the Scratch VM project, and run it in some node container or something, yeah. and have it constant there. This is very cool. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Thank you so much. Minecraft, all the way down to Cool, cool. Just go for it. Try it out. And we'll yeah. Thanks for your interest. Can you go back to the links? Yeah. So this one here. And this is easy to find. Just Yeah, that's right here. It is here. Right. <laughs> A couple of things. It's easy to find. Don't, don't write down the URL of this. Just go to um, the Minecraft page, learn.study, and then down here, you get to this. From here. Maybe we have more users on our web page. <laughs> <laughs> make it easy to find. All right, any other questions otherwise? I know we're between you and the break. <laughs> we're around, you can talk to us afterwards as well. We'd love to see many of you on our Discord server, chat with you. <laughs> see you. Yeah. All right, thanks. Thanks again.